Hey guys, Paul DC here, and today we have a new video about once again the Silva method. But we are going to discuss a different angle compared to the other videos. Basically, the things that scare people the most and prevent them into getting into the method or trying to test the method or to try the method or just give it a shot to see if they can feel better. We are going to refer to uh, people generically, but I came up with this video mainly because I've known uh, at least, I dare to say, between five and ten people from my own personal realm and people that I directly know that uh, it can be said they have very strugglesome lives, uh, lots of chaos, lots of issues, lots of problems. And when they were introduced to the method, they are right to the method mainly because they were desperate with these problems and they ended up rejecting the method. It just didn't work for them and it's not like the me method on itself failed, but they just dropped it. And you don't need to believe in spirituality to get along uh, on the right track with the method. You don't even need to believe in reincarnation, uh, higher beings or whatever. Most people uh, and this is very truthful, just enter the method perhaps to be able to relax themselves and cope with the stress. Stress is a very uh, human thing. It is at the surface level of the first layers of the typical issues one would expect a modern human being could have. And the method will do its wonders whether you believe in all that other stuff or not. But why people are afraid of the silver method and this is the term that I encounter, I encounter that these uh, people that I know uh, either used or felt directly and it was the main reason of why they actually quit the method and sadly lost all of the positive uh, potential and impact it could have had on their lives. Mainly the first one is uh, something related to marketing. When we say mind control method, uh, it doesn't sound that right. I don't know if the name changed or at least uh, that is how it was, if I'm not mistaken, translated into my country. So at the beginning, people uh, understood that these were like very dark, deceptive techniques to be able to control and manipulate other people. So no one wanted to do anything with that. Then um, the, some other people also thought that uh, this was kind of like um, a method based on hypnosis, where if they delved into it at the risk of being some sort of cult, they could have like their head washed and their set of beliefs twisted for another person's best interest in their own detriment. And I was told this in a funny way by, by my master, and th all those things back in the day were kind of like overcome. Uh, people actually understood what the method was about. And those who dared not to believe into the realm that is beyond what our physical eyes are able to see, they were just introduced to the method as a relaxation method to be able to sleep better, reduce your stress and perform better. That's it. And most of these people, Oddly enough, once they were introduced, most of them ended up becoming believers. But what is the factor that then determines that if we have cases from non-believers to believers, thanks to the method, what happens with that people that they may already be religious, they have already worked with faith, um, or they even meditated some of them from like transcendental meditation. But what happens with that people that they are not not believers, they are kind of like in the middle of the way or midway better said, and yet they just cannot engage with the method. First of all, uh, the method is not for everyone, but not the Silva method. Any method is not for everyone. Um, there are so many techniques and methods of, uh, and ways to tap into the same thing and realm that you can expect it's like going to the gym. Not, uh, not every routine is for every person. It is exactly the same. The most important thing is to have the will 
to be able to leverage this uh, technology or, or to leverage this uh, science, if you will, science, it is an accurate term to describe this, um, just to get better on any aspect that you may need it. Being that said, I do believe that that factor that explains why people that didn't believe in anything end up being uh, super believers and they exercise the course and they shift their lives kind of like uh, from one way to another in a positive outcome um, and at the same time people that already sort of believe they just cannot go through the method the main factor that explains that I believe it is acceptance and I do have a dedicated video on acceptance and one of the core principles not only of this particular method but of any method uh, set to grow your awareness to expand your consciousness and to be able to tap into presence so you can realize and sense that that uh, true essence that is beyond your physical body and even even your mental realm um, you need to fully accept the fact that you are the sole constructor of your reality and everything that occurs to you even though uh, those things may be uh, perhaps in some cases not pleasant at all those things that one may say well but if I had a choice to be accountable for everything that happened to me if this was done by someone else physically let's say how can I be responsible for that well, that statement is true if you look at it from the physical layer or from or just strictly from the physical realm. But when you delve into this ancient knowledge and that the mat material world, it is an illusion governed mainly by thought or that even thought or from a substance that comes from elsewhere that we could label as, uh, as ether or the fifth element, uh, we can learn and even see in our uh, in in our lives as we practice these methods how that is extremely truthful and plain and, sim and simple sadly many people are just not ready to accept that the the awful parts of their lives uh, were either due to them we are not going to talk about guilt because guilt does not exist it is an illusion that keeps many people trapped into their own illusory uh, uh, realities but what I mean with this is taking full acceptance implies looking at ourselves naked in the mirror I'm not saying you should do this this is just a metaphor, a, a metaphor please um, don't get me wrong but it is seeing yourself in the mirror fully naked at your truest essence and sometimes the image that reflects back to you may not be as nice as you thought, as happy as you thought, or as pleasant as you thought. And when you confront with that, the next step is saying, okay, I'm going to own all of this and I'm going to move forward. I'm going to leave this in the past. I changed and now I'm going to work on myself I'm going to work on growing my awareness and to carving that depth into your true identity. And it depends on everyone's life path, life choices, past, uh, past events. Some people may have this easier coming to them. Some people may spend several lifetimes without being able to escape that wheel of, um, of, of events and, and getting to that realization while being incarnated just to make that a spiritual step forward and you have all the shades of colors in between the person that never gets to realize that and the one that realize it, realizes it in a heartbeat but other than that in my own personal opinion and based on on the books that I've read uh, and things I've experienced it is the the only way uh, to move uh, to move forward because whether you may neglect something or you would reject accepting something you did you didn't like 
or getting to the depth of a certain event that at the very depth you could easily see that it was your own choice. I'm not saying this applies to every single event, but being able to perceive that even though you may neglect it from your conscious mind, it doesn't change the fact that you always construct your own reality. So we are putting into a scale, weighing two different things. One that is an illusion, a neglection of the conscious mind of your physical vessel. And the other, it is, an, it is merely a universal truth. So we cannot even compare something illusory with something that is not illusory. The truth is only one. So that is why these methods revolve uh, around uh, that. And some people, most people, sadly, that may be uh, extremely self-identified through their egoic selves and through the things that will, ne will never uh, last uh, throughout time, which may be their physical looks, their economic position, their shop title and everything. I always repeat in, in most of my videos, people that are highly identified with those uh, traits will have a harder time into realizing this. But other than that, it is the way, it is um, the only way. And once you are able to overcome the hardest step, which is uh, getting into that full acceptance, everything should flow better. Uh, at least it has for me and many other people that I know that either took this step or not. The other issue is that uh, I don't want to tie this too, uh, too close to, to religion, but many people sadly operate under the mechanism of guilt and assigning guilt, whether it is to ourselves or to other people, it is um, a very common thing when you are driven by your ego. Since your ego feeds on, 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 on feeling itself grow while lessening another, another person, one easy way to lessen another person is to pin the guilt of something. And as a secondary effect, if you pin the guilt of something bad that happened to you to another person, it means that you are not responsible for it. So it's kind of like a win-win that the ego uh, takes home, right? So that is a major, uh, another major roadblock. Uh, many people are just uh, not ready to escape the guilt mechanism because when you escape it and you start dissolving the ego, you don't even have a choice to make you will become aware that there was never a choice. It was always your own creation. And that's when acceptance is something that you cannot work logically. You just become aware of it. The same way many books uh, talk about becoming aware that there is, when you tap into presence, there is a still a presence, even though your mind may be shut down with no thoughts there is still something and that something is your true essence, your awareness. The architect, if you will, that constructs and configures the reality uh, you live in. This is very tricky, but all the people that I found that were not able to go through the method and implement it in their lives, uh, they had some major struggle into coming full circle with full acceptance. And that's when it may have become too painful for them or they just were not ready at that point in time. It doesn't mean they are failures, that they fail, that this will never work for them. It was just not the right moment, uh, at least for them. That's what, what we have to, um, to believe. At least they may come to a different realization at a later uh, stage in their lives. And that's when they quit it because um, it is easier feel like they are in control by not being in control because the method talks and teaches you that actually, sorry about the noise, that you are in control of everything that takes place in your life, in this experience on this earth. I hope this is clear. 
And if this is the case, perhaps hearing this could help you realize some points or some roughness, roughness that may be along the way. And hopefully by staring at this roughness or, or these rough spots throughout the way with the light of your consciousness and your presence, those uh, roadblocks often dissolve. So that is one way to overcome them, just to being aware that they are there and shine your presence onto them. Sometimes that is not enough, but I hope this video at least uh, be, is able to get, if you are on this road, uh, get you a little bit closer. See you in the next one.